Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Well, um, you're early, but I'm late. <laughs> How are you all? I, uh, at the last second, realized none of the audio was working, and I had to figure out, I had to kind of do a deep dive. Yeah. You know, it's always, it's always the audio, and it's because of it's, it's a permissions thing, and yeah, anyway. Hi, Randa. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Terry. How's it going? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. I'm sewing part one today of the Renee dress. There's a lots of really great stuff um, with this project. And um, I think it's gonna actually turn out really, really cute. Uh, I'm the, the major modification I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be attaching a waist casing with a tie instead of using elastic or a sash. And I got that idea from one of their other patterns, which was the um, Sophie dress, <laughs> Sophie dress, which I was wearing yesterday. So anyway, hey Margaret, hey Danny, hey Rebecca. Um, and the fabric was provided to me by Lush Cloth. And this is them right here on the screen here. And I'll put a link in the chat because the fabric's pretty cool. It's the Wild Meadow in Viscous is the, oh, that's not, that is definitely not the link. That was my earlier search. I found a way to use my microphone on my iPhone when I record video. <laughs> so I was, I was researching that. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, it's still, it's still put it there. Well, there's the cable I need. <laughs> but that's, that link goes to the fabric. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Hi, Aisha. How are you all? Happy sewing. Happy sewing. You guys sewing? <clears throat> you did too, Randa? Awesome. Yeah, I think I, I'm just not a big fan of elastic um, waists. I, I don't know why. It, they, I think they're, they're great because it, <clears throat> excuse me, it keeps the volume at a very fixed amount, which is great. Um, per personally, I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't like the way the elastic feels. I think if you're kind of busty and short-waisted, those are a little bit, they feel a little limiting, you know? <clears throat> oh yes, mustard, that's right. You're right, Barbara. I was wondering what the other colorway of this was. I love mustard. See, mustard's that one color I really love. And um, I was at a fabric store once and I just asked this complete stranger because I just love this, this one fabric there. And I was like, could I pull this off? And they were like, nope. <laughs> like okay <laughs> thanks for your honesty it's stuck with me and it wasn't in a negative way I was actually really appreciative I was like you know what one stranger to another let's be honest so ooh, the the shawl raven bag Terry hey Anna hey Elena how are you 
the Fjall Robin, um, or it's not called that. The 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 one that the person made that looks just like it. Um, got you looking at Cordura. Talk to me, baby. I know a lot about Cordura. <laughs> You'd probably want like a 300 denier, two or 300 denier, just so you know. Don't go over 300. Yeah, go, like stick in that, you know. Um, a canvas would be great too. There's a lot of like cotton canvases that have kind of been, I was gonna say kind of a bad word, but um, just in the context of, um, they've been altered to not be it. A natural fiber anymore where they um, impregnate the fiber with a waterproof um, capability that would actually also be a nice fabric for something like that like one of those waterproof canvases cotton canvases but they're not really so anyway all right so the other modification I'm gonna be doing on this dress and this is the way the dress looks but the cover photo like a lot of their photos it really just kind of gives you the vibe of the garment, um, but this is what this is what the flat sketch looks like. So I'm doing this sleeve. Oh, sorry, you don't want to see my fingernail right now. I live a real life, you guys. <laughs> there's no snail salons in, in my life. Um, uh, there's a. I'm doing this little cap sleeve, and I'm doing this bodice here with the uh, two tiers. So I actually think, and I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but I think that this is not the correct picture because, see the thing is the bodice creates the first tier, unless that's what that they're showing right here. Actually, you're, this, that, that's right, it is, it is being displayed correctly. No, no, because the short dress is two tiers right so if the short dress is two tiers and the bodice creates the first tier this wouldn't be the two-tier dress this would be but there's also a third tier pattern piece so um so this one here they used a sash to create the first tier here so this is technically that's the whole bodice piece but that's how it's that's how the pattern pieces are. And then this one here, that would be the elastic and then just one tier. So I think that this is missing a tier and this one is too, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm doing one that'll look a lot like, actually like this with this, this sleeve. Um, and I'm gonna do a belt built onto the garment. The other modification I'm gonna do is a sewing modification because I think there's a slightly simpler way to do the neck treatment. Um, their directions are great. Um, I'm just going to do this all in one binding and I'm going to do the elastic and a casing. So anyway, <clears throat> that was a really wordy way to explain all that. Yeah, 500 is very stiff, Terry. We used 500 denier to make uh, life jackets or reinforced knees on uh, pants and things like that. I think that if you were to sew that, you'd be going through a lot of needles and you'd be a little frustrated. It's just unnecessary in other words, you know what I mean? You made a dog coat with corduroy. Yeah, and a dog coat's flat for the most part, right? It's like a flat piece, so that's great. And a pocket. And I modified the pocket today and I'll go over that in a little bit because I think because of the waist modification that I would like to do, I um, originally was going to construct the front of the dress and construct the back of the dress, leave the side seams open so I could put pockets in because there aren't pockets on this pattern. Um, and I can see why they didn't do that because it really does kind of complicate the sewing process and they're trying to not do that, you know, especially with tears and things like that. So it is a little unconventional that I'm adding a pocket to this, but I, I, I don't care. I want one anyway. And the, the gathers of the tears will um, sort of camouflage them. So I'm going to allow my pockets to be probably an inch lower than they normally would. And that way I'm going to sew them below the seam of the bodice to the first tier. That way I can do my belt on my bodice all in one piece because that's kind of necessary, you know what I mean? The other thing is I'm gonna need buttonholes. Oh man, I'm gonna need buttonholes. Which means I have to get my other machine out, so. 
let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do the darts so that I don't lose my pins here because they're on the they're on the right side of the fabric right now and um, you know I was just a little bit you know not thinking it all the way through when I had to mark because I you know usually if I would cut out something I would cut it so that the um, right side is um, not face up when I'm cutting so that all my markings can be on the back side and I didn't do that yesterday. <laughs> so my darts are marked on the right side of the fabric. So let's, let's move those and then sew up the darts so that I don't lose my pins, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and Cordura is really affordable, Terry. Where's my other dart notch? Tell me it's on this one so I can use it. What the heck? Why are, where's my dart leg notch? You guys saw me do them. Oh, yay, carumba. All right, where is it? Not that piece. This is it. Found it. I've been trying to get better about folding my pieces like this. You know how like people who do little demonstrations are like, always fold your pattern pieces so that the name of the piece is face out. I rarely ever manage to do that, but I'm trying. I'm really trying and look, I did pretty good this time. I didn't do the third fold, but I got it in there. <laughs> so. It's just sometimes, you know, we have our ways we do things and we just don't think about it. I can see the nips in my pattern piece. There's one cut and here's the other. That That's the one that didn't make it right there. Okay. They're tiny. Uh, this pattern has three eighths inch seams as well. So I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative with my <laughs> nips in the fabric uh, when I mark my notches and things because I don't, I'm not usually that conservative. Like quarter inch long marks and then I'm like, whoa, Nelly, too close to the seam allowance, you know. All right, here we go. Oh, don't you dare come unthreaded, you jerk. My machine's gonna do this because I have contacts now and threading the machine is an adventure because I'm still getting used to them. Yes! <laughs> I think I finally found my, my, my pair. And it's great because now I can just wear glasses like half as much which is just more comfortable for me. My sides of my head are too sensitive to wear glasses. <laughs> is anyone else like that? Like, oh man. Oh. How are you guys? Happy Thursday. It's like, it feels kind of like a weird week to me. Where's my other one? I feel it. Here it is, right here. Right here. This is the side, yep. It's a little hard to see that. It's kind of a busy print, you know? I was gonna go in and then I use my machine as kind of the um, third hand that I've always wanted to have, you know? The expression, I've only got two hands. Man, I would like more hours in the day and a second set of hands and a robot me. Right? Get rid of my. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into the neckline. Um, and so the first thing I'm gonna do, so this is the way that you would normally do this is you would bind the front neck and you'd bind the back neck. And um, <clears throat> if you aren't interested in my modification, that's totally fine. But um, stick around at least to see how I sew binding on because I'm gonna show you a probably a much faster, simpler, and less risky way to do it than the instructions have you do it. Um, 
uh, and, and it'll it'll be it won't be as intimidating. So just stick with with me on that one. All right. So I'm gonna put my binding. I made a very big piece of binding, and I'm just gonna sew it together right now, so that I have it ready to go. I didn't put it on the true bias, so it looks a little funky because it, you know it's ran. I don't really need it to be on the true bias. It'll be fine. It's it's already stretchy enough, right? That was a really long diagonal though, wasn't it? All right. I don't think I got it very lined up either. Look at that. All right, let's just, let's start that over again. I'll show you a better way. <laughs> We're just gonna cut the seam allowance right off. We're not gonna seam rip it. All right. Here's the trick with binding when you're seaming it. If you put all of your ends right side, you put your binding right side up, all the layers, and then you can cut it. I'm just gonna cut it at a, a little easier to manage angle. These two ends sew together. So if you give them the same cut, they're gonna line up better. And then when you line it up, you're gonna line it up on the intersection so you see that little jog right there, that little, that's your seam line right there. You wanna go jog to jog so that your binding makes a nice smooth line. And mine's still gonna be a little wiggly, but It'll be fine. All right, so now we have it jog to jog. So then we open it up. We have a nice smooth line. We can just cut these little corners off. And I used to have binding professionally made and they used an extremely small seam allowance, like maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch, like it was a little small, so. I learned a lot about that and they pressed the heck out of it. Black thread on my hair. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you can't find both of your black socks and you're wearing a black and a blue. <laughs> hey, Shasha, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so the other end I'm just gonna cut at a 90 degree angle like this. So it's just blunt. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna sew my front to my sleeves and my back and I have one whole neckline. I'm gonna have to trim off at the neckline on the sleeve the amount that you would turn back to make the casing. Hey Libby, all right, cool. <laughs> Brave safe. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It is, it's pretty obvious in real life. See that, Barbara? The, the wrong side to the right side. Libby, Danny says, be careful, don't chat and drive. Maybe that's why she has two messages because she's probably doing voice to chat like Nancy does. All right, so we're gonna trim off the, um, at the neckline edge, this little sleeve. So here, this is the sleeve. Okay, so this is the neck right here, and this is the front armhole, and this is the back armhole. And we're just gonna trim off the um, 3 8 they tell you to turn it back for the elastic casing. I would probably normally do this with a rotary knife just so I can make sure I do a nice, smooth line. And parallel to the edge. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, I've done that. I've done that before on fabrics that didn't have a right and wrong side. So yeah, <laughs> it's a good fear to have. <laughs> All right, I already cut my elastic pieces for the medium and it's five and a quarter. That seemed kind of small too. All right, and so we're gonna um, sew our, it's kind of hard to see. This is my bodice right here. My front bodice, see there? There's the neck right there. And I'm gonna sew, oh, I'm gonna do some um, uh, French seams as well. So why am I doing that like that? There we go, wrong sides together. So we're gonna do some French seams. Um, Dang, I don't have I don't have seam allowance for French seams. <sighs> I guess we can overlock. We can start, we can do the serger. It'll be a little faster too. 
All right, let's do the serger. I set it up just in case. I wasn't sure, you know. All right, what's this one here? This is a sleeve. I'm gonna set my pieces out here. Off to the side here. This is the front. I can tell because of the darts. And this is a sleeve. And this is the back, okay. All right, and this is the, this one here. If I had bigger seam allowance, I would absolutely French seam this, especially on a nice fabric like this. And I'm already a little bit like shocked that I am cutting, I had to, uh, I measured for the medium. So it makes me a little nervous to be like, oh, I'll just take a bigger seam allowance because that would really add up, you know? Oh wait, is this the back? What the heck? I think this is the back. I'm not gonna continue, just in case. It feels, it feels like it's not going to fit, so. I thought I just checked, too. There we go. Let's take this out. I'm off to a great start. This always happens on a project, doesn't it? I'm like, let's do this. All right, let's like sew a quarter inch, take it out. It's like you gotta like get into the groove of the project sometimes, you know? I even, nowadays I read the instructions through, especially on something like, um, something I haven't made before. Only because I feel a little bit more responsible that I am giving you <laughs> kind of an, a better you know, order of operations, so. All right, here we go. Look at that huge notch I put in the fabric there. <laughs> Get a little overzealous with my notching sometimes. I haven't overlocked a garment together. It's been a while, hasn't it, guys? I think it's been a while. That's funny. Okay, this is the other front to the sleeve. These angles are always a little funny with raglans. So make sure when you are lining up your seam, like I did on the binding, you always wanna make sure that the juncture right here, that's the 3 8 line, or the seam line, or whatever you're sewing, right? So don't match up your raw edges, like point to point, don't do that, it won't line up. And you'll be frustrated right off the bat, you know what I mean? It's so like down here, it conveniently does kind of all line up on the corners right there. This is the armhole and this is the side seam right here, or the underarm, whatever you want to call it, because this is the sleeve and this is the shirt. Um, but really, we're only concerned with where it lines up right here on the seam line. And just because raglans, you don't have to set in the sleeve, it doesn't mean there aren't some kind of uh, funky little curves and... Uh, along the way, you know, it's a nice little little curvy path you gotta take. Mine's not lining up perfectly because I probably didn't trim enough off the neck for my casing. All right, so now we have two front sleeves onto the back and now we're gonna sew the back onto these sleeves here. It does, Barbara, right? Pretty used to it though. I sometimes wish there was like a little you know, I mean, everybody, like performers, you know, they they warm up their voice or whatever. <laughs> Maybe I need like a warm up sewing project. Heck, gamers do it too, you know? They warm up before they start playing. Well, like the ones that actually are good. <laughs> Not me. And then we're gonna have one continuous neckline. All right. 
it and last one it's gigantic look at that neckline it's big the ran or this viscose is going to be great for a um, to scrunch up a lot of fabric with elastic you know, linen's great as long as it's lightweight enough, um, but rands and viscous are even better. I love this um, little stream deck. It's so fast now to switch between scenes like that. See that? Okay, so here's our neckline, right? This is our neckline, okay? Let's find our front. This is our front and this is our back, okay? So here we go, okay? Um, now is the time where you're gonna need your label too. So I'm going to find the center, which I didn't mark my centers on the neckline because it's not as crucial for sewing anything because we're not really matching a pattern piece to it, you know, like I did on the waist with the tears and stuff like that. Um, I'm only marking the center back for a label placement. That's it, which I've already lost. I knew I was about to lose it. I'm just getting another one. And so I'm just going to tack it on here right off the bat. Let's get rid of all these little tails. Make sure your transitions on your seams are pretty smooth because you're about to smooth them out anyway with your binding. Because look at this one. See how that one's not very smooth? That doesn't bug me just because, like I said, I had to trim off the sleeve and you don't, you know, because you don't want, um, we're not folding it over. So, all right, so we're going to attach this elastic. I'm going to do it between the seams here. Actually, let's sew on the binding first and then we'll put the elastic on. Oh, there's my, there's my little label. All right, here's my square piece. This is my tip. When you're starting binding off and you're sewing it in a circle. Hey, Sue. I did, Elena. Want to see it? Here it is right here. So this right here is my start and stop streaming button. This is the scene right here. This look, this is the pattern table. <laughs> this is the iron. This is the iron right here. This right here is full screen. And then me and my computer, which, which isn't set up right now. Um, this right here is um, the lo-fi station on YouTube. This is that light over there. I have an Elgato key light over there. This is what if I want to start recording. This is, and these are all just website links for me. So. Uh, Twitch, the Guild, and um, my YouTube channel, I think. Or just YouTube in general. So, yeah. I still have two empty spots, plus the Elgato help thing I can get rid of someday, too. So, yeah. I love it. All right, so we're going to start the binding on the inside neck, all right? And um, when you're doing something in a circle, fold down the end of your starting piece here, all right? Because we're not gonna seam it or anything like that. I'm gonna start, usually I would start like right here at the shoulder seam. This is the back, I'm on the inside of the neck, right? And here's the shirt, right? It's above. Um, usually I'd start here, but because we're gonna put elastic there, I'm just gonna stay away from that a little bit and put it just like off to the side here. And we're gonna sew this. I'm gonna do like, healthy quarter inch seam allowance, right? I, my cut, I cut my binding at one and three eighths. I think their pattern piece was for, was it one and a half? 
So that, that works too. All right, and I'm gonna push my seams towards the sleeve. And we're just gonna go all the way around. We're starting on the inside. I know the indirect directions. Oh my, that's what's going on. I have this really long stitch length right now. Um, that's too short. I know the instructions have you start from the outside and they have you fold, like pre-fold all your binding, but, but trust me, you don't have to do that, okay? It's gonna be fine. All right. Just going around. When we put the elastic in, it will be a little awkward, I know that. <laughs> That's why I say you can, you can still sew the binding in this way, just on your front and just on your back neck if you want, and then do the way they have you do the um, elastic at the sleeve, because that will work totally. I just don't really like, personally, I don't like a seam going through my neckline. And I should explain that better just so you understand like why. Because um, basically, if you put your elastic to your sleeve and you folded it, hemmed it, and you, you finished it, you'd have a raw edge on your armholes, right? Your front and your back armholes would still be raw. And if you had bound your front neckline, you found bound your back neckline, your front and your back armholes are still raw. Now when you go to sew your front armhole on your sleeve to your front armhole on your shirt, the seam's gonna end just like this at the neckline edge. And so, that often, you can see that when you look inside, you can see it when people are wearing it, you'll see that little edge. Um, and you, there is ways to kind of clean that up a little bit by like I would push it to the inside, and tack it down, stuff like that. But um, I just don't think you have to do it that way. I think we could get away with doing this a little differently. So my tension on my serger isn't that great. I just noticed. All right, almost done. So I'm now I'm coming back to the beginning of the binding where I remember when I turned it back right here, here it is, that little turn back edge. So I'm gonna lay my binding. I should say I kind of gently pull my binding, but it's not that critical on something like this. All right, so now here we are at the end and we're just gonna lay the binding right on top of that sew up to the folded back edge right there. See that? Folded back edge. And now just cut this off flush with that. Kind of like that. You don't have to be nice about it. All right. So now I just caught a thread. This is that juncture right there. Okay. See, so that's the turn back edge and this is the, I just laid it up there. So now when we turn this to the outside and turn it under, that's a finished edge there. See it? All right, so we're gonna iron. I no don't normally iron this, but we're gonna iron today because, you know, we want it to be easy as possible, right? Ooh, let's hope my iron's cooperating though, because it's been a little bit funky lately. A little nervous about it. All right, I'll, I'll fold from the inside or iron from the inside. And I'm just gonna fold the um, binding up. And the only reason I'm really doing this is because we're doing it on rayon and rayon, you know, rayon has a mind of its own. Who decided to give rayon a brain? I wanna talk to them. Okay. So I'm just pressing the seam up. We're not gonna have to worry at all about being perfectly accurate on our last stitch like you normally would. And that's why I'm showing this to you because if you ever have to bind anything, this is the way to do it. Always start from the wrong side and end on the right side. You don't really care as much where it's going to land on the inside. I know we care a little bit, but not like we care about how it lands on the front. And this way you don't have to try and catch the inside edge 
because it's already sewn down, right? I do this on cuffs, waistbands, collar stands, you name it. All right. So now we're gonna put our elastic on in between there. I know, a little unconventional. And make sure you put it between the, on the sleeves, not on the front of the back. Hi, so fun, how's it going? Exactly. That's what I'm always saying. I'm always like, and even in some of my videos, I'm like, now this is when you're telling it. This is what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. This is where you're gonna be. So we're just kind of conditioning you. It's like a nice little pep talk. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, let's not get turned around. So look, there's my, my back and my front. So these right here are my sleeves. So we're going to, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, we're just going to tack the elastic in the seam allowance at the ends there. I'll show you up close in just a second. Hopefully my binding is wide enough because I forgot that I needed elastic and I wasn't sure. I don't have white. All right, so see here I just kind of, let me show you what I got going on here. So here's my binding. Here is the armhole seam right here. You see it? Can you see it right there? Right? This is the neckline. And I just tacked it to the seam allowance right there. It is gonna be really tight for me to get my binding to wrap around this. So the one and a half inch was a good idea by five out of four for, for the way I'm doing this, even though, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you learned it from me. <laughs> awesome, yeah. <laughs> I was like, see, great minds. Okay, it's the same thing, just tack it on here. Tack it down good too. Oof, that is, that is a, that is a long way to go. I take it back, this might be hard. This might be a little hard. <laughs> so, one of the other things I've done before, the problem, we, the reason we can't thread the elastic in a casing at the end is because this is a continuous circle. If this were a flat opening, we could absolutely thread it in there. And I've done things where I've threaded the elastic in there. And as I pulled it up to the spot, I want to secure it at one end. I pull it really carefully, tack it down, and then I pull it to the other end. But um, we, we don't have that opportunity here because um, it's a, closed circle. So this might be a little bit tricky. I may be staring you awry here. I, it's rare though, so hopefully you'll forgive me. It's still gonna look clean though. We like that. If we can't have French seams, right? <laughs> if we can't have French seams, we'll have a nice clean neck line. And technically speaking, the elastic should, you know, hang off of the edge of the seam allowance, right? Because it should have been lined up to the raw edge, but I'm not going to make it any smaller. So, <laughs> right? So fun. I totally agree. I am like all about like, how do we all get there together? <laughs> it doesn't just need to be me. Oof. Yeah, this is some heavy duty stretching. All right. So I'm gonna start on the back, and, and I don't have a free arm, so this is why my whole garment is up on top of the table, right? So I'm gonna start. This is inside out, and here's my neckline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the binding around, and we're gonna edge stitch it, right? But remember, we're on the right side of the garment. All we have to do is fold this binding just past that original seam line, and it's gonna cover it all up, and um, we're gonna get it going a little bit. We're not gonna start on the sleeve um, and the casing because we're, we're nicer to ourselves in that, okay? All right, so, but we're gonna get there really quick because the, the back is super short. Let's, um, let's bring down the camera a little bit too. see. 
can you see okay? Like it, it looks like I can't even tell where my foot is. Contrast. This is my foot. Here's my binding. I feel like we could do a little better. I'm gonna saturate it a little bit too, so you can tell the fabric. My hands start turning red when I do that. <laughs> uh, that's a little better. All right, so I'm gonna just fold it over. And I always use my awl to hold this little edge here. See that? And I'm pulling it over the original stitching. And like I said, you don't really care about what's going on on the inside. No one's gonna see that but you. So when you get to this little area where we overlapped it, I like to separate them out. I do one layer first, like I kind of fold it down, and then I wrap this one around it. And this one's always the funny one. So you may have to fiddle with this a little bit. You could fold them at the same time. I just like to do it separately like that. And then I hold it down. I always stick my finger and kind of slide it around and then that kind of calms down any lumps and bumps going on there. All right, so now I'm at the sleeve and this is where things are gonna get kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, so always stop needle down, okay? Oh, okay, great, thank you for saying that, Terry. All right, so I'm gonna pull this stretch it all the way out and I'm gonna grab it in the middle. Let me make sure I've got this kind of flat. I'm gonna grab it in the middle like this. So I only have to hold that, all right? Oof, this is gonna be tough. Mainly because I use my right hand to do this folding. So let's get it going a little bit better. And then I'll hold it. So I'm gonna fold it over. And even if it's too shallow, I'm gonna use my awl to hoik it over because, and I'm gonna tuck this elastic in there like this. I'm gonna pull the binding over it. And um, because the binding is stretchy, because it's biased, it's going to make it, like it's gonna be able to cover it all up. I'm just gonna stretch the elastic as far as it'll go while I sew. I think that's honestly, how it's gonna work. I'm, I'm actually trying not to sew on the elastic. Just so it kind of is in a casing. Oof, all y'all who use the one and a half inch wide are just like laughing at me right now. Like, you thought you were so clever, Jeremy. You should have stuck with the directions. <laughs> just to note that this is not how I if next time I would make a, a um, facing for the whole neckline no binding that's how you could make this whole thing clean finished and um, easy to sew because this is this is tough wait where's my elastic there it is I just can't hold it, you know? Here we go. Luckily, the gathers are gonna hide any little weirdness. <laughs> That's what we're counting on right now. Yeah, I would do this differently. Sometimes you just don't know until you sew it though. And I'm trying to use what I've got, so. Get over there, elastic, there we go. Oof, I'm gonna get a break in a second.
If your machine doesn't automatically stop needle down, this is probably a little bit harder. Um, the other thing you can do is increase the pressure of your presser foot. But for my machine, it's right here. It's this right here. If you have a, a post like this on top. Um, that is one thing I really favor is a lot of pressure on my machine. It's the one big reason why sewing on a home machine is now really hard for me to do. I'm not very good at it. Um, all right, so now I have a little break, but look, that looks pretty nice. Look at that. It is scrunched though. I'll show you up close in a minute. All right, so I get a little break. Um, in that video I have where I like race my three machines together against each other, I used to have a industrial like this without electronics and I raced it against this one and then my home machine because I was like, you know, there's advantage to, advantages to using all three. Um, and, you know, most a lot of people are concerned with how fast it is to put something together. I, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not, I'm not obviously not in the slow sewing movement. No one would ever in that movement <laughs> invite me <laughs> along to anything. Um, I, but I love it. I, I love the idea of it. And, I, and I, I'm not about just doing things as fast as possible. But it is kind of, um, what I think what I really like is efficiency. I like things that are minimal movement, you know, um, you know, it makes it more pleasurable to sew. And I think slow sewing is its own type of efficiency, right? So anyway, um, that was a really fun video. And the, and the thing that I thought was making me faster to sew things together was not what I thought it was. It's the fact that my, my machine stops needle down every time. That, that's literally the key. Because it's like having a helping hand, you know? All right, so, oh, that's a little easier if I do that. And now I can straighten it. Okay. No, 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 no. I've got to kind of help it because I'm pulling so hard on the elastic. Still trying to, for the most part, stay off of the elastic. And, and I, I think most of the time I am actually not stitching on the elastic itself. It's not a bad thing if I do because it's it's evenly stretched. But it is, I think, better. Oh, I need to reset here. I think it's better if the elastic is free flowing in there, you know, free moving. Okay, if that happens where it starts pulling under, reset yourself, kind of lift up your presser foot, get it all kind of sorted out again, sew a little bit, and then you're kind of back on track. Because what that happens sometimes where it just pulls too hard and it starts pulling past your presser foot towards you, and it's really hard to get it to correct at that point. You've just got to kind of um, relax it, let it snap back into the spot, and then keep going. What machine am I using? Um, this is a Juki 8700-7. Needle down is the best. You could sew the casing, but not all the way from end to end, leave an inch. So uh, I can't with a, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but I can't do that with the, um, the loop turner I use. You could with a safety pin though, you're right. Yeah, you could totally do that. Oof, I hope I can stretch the elastic enough. See, it can't, it can't, uh... I'm gonna take it out a little bit. Is it loose? Not right here. Oh, I'm gonna take out a few stitches right here so that the elastic can move. There we go. Should we look at it and see how it's looking? See, look at that. It looks pretty nice though. Look at how much it has to stretch. That's the right side. All right, where are we at? Let's finish it. So 
making sure it's going to stretch all the way. That's why you also have to have it free. All right. I thought I just trimmed that. Oh, I did. Okay. Sometimes if you can really for sure stay off of elastic if you're stretching it this much, you can also um, not stretch it at all while you're sewing. I have a little thread tail. I'm just trying to get rid of it. Because see, I can just wrap it around the elastic like this but without stretching it. But if there's any danger that I'm going to land on the elastic itself, um, it wouldn't stretch if I sewed through it right now. So that's why I'm trying to make sure that the elastic can move freely in the casing. Yeah, I do too. I just think that there's other ways you could do this. That, Because um, I also don't think a lot of people really like sewing binding. I, I love it. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's a little, if you had wider binding, this would be a lot easier or narrower elastic or both, right? Because then you could just sew this wrapping it around the elastic. I'm trying to do it without stretching it. Make, gotta make sure though. Home stretch, look at this. It looks like I have two inches left. I really have like six inches. <laughs> I just want a third arm down here. There we go. Oof, that doesn't look so good right there. All right. Home stretch. Certainly try harding today. Get that seam allowance in there. Try and maintain your elastic on one side of the seam allowance um, so it doesn't get twisted too, you know. All right, we made it. Let's see how it looks. It's just a little too tight. That's just, I hate to say it, but that's just not okay to put an elastic that tight, even if it's in a casing, because look at twists and stuff. Because I, I just don't think that's gonna lay very flat, you know? See that? It's very bumpy. But it looks cute. Oh, that's the, that's the back. This is the front. Here we go. So you could put, if you felt like, oh, this sleeve's very, very full, you, or it's very, it's very uh, high up on you, you could make the elastic longer. It would, it would make the um, neck opening a little bigger. And then see on the inside, see, we didn't really care if it fell on top of the binding or not. It does in a lot of cases though. Sorry, there we go. So that's the inside. It's the right side. Let's get rid of these little threads here. Okay, so our next step is um, we're gonna do the side seams and then I'm gonna do that casing on the waist. It's my other mod. Okay, so where's my, there it is right there. 
So I'm gonna pin that so I don't lose the positioning there. I don't know why, but there's not a pin on the back. I mean, a notch on the back, so. And we could actually iron that in as well. That little crease, that'll help us keep it nice and straight. Someone here gave me that tip. They were like, why don't you just iron it? I'm like, oh my God, you're a genius. <laughs> Didn't we do that on the Azores maybe? Get a nice straight line. So if you're attaching the elastic to the waist, this might be handy too. And this is just gonna be the positioning for the waist casing that I'm gonna add. Let's do it on the back too. So I'm gonna find the same spot. Right here. I'm not sure why there's a, it makes me feel like I'm sewing it wrong when there, there's not a notch. And then I think, oh, maybe I am misinterpreting the, the flat sketch. Oh, I should iron my dart while I'm here. You know? Hey, Martina, how's it going? Nice to see you. All right, now I'm gonna fold this one. You could draw a line or score it um, with like a hair marker. You know what those are? Do I have a, um, I don't think I have a clean ruler. I'll show it to you though. So you could take a um, hair marker like this. And if you had a long enough ruler to go all the way, connect those two lines, take this, this is just like a, pla a sharp piece of plastic and you score it like this and there's a divot in the fabric. So that's another way to do marking. I love using that thing. Hey Heidi, how's it going? Yeah, isn't it great? It's from Lush Cloth, which um, it's on this. Oh, it's not on this screen, but it's on the machine screen. It'll, I'll show you in just a second. Um, they gave it to me to do a project in, and I could pick whatever project I wanted. That doesn't look straight to me. <laughs> That's why I'm looking at my feet. There we go. I would normally put this on my uh, pattern table and draw a straight line and then do it. We're winging it. There we go. All right. Let's iron the dart real quick. I think too, if you scroll up in the chat, you'll find a link to the fabric. It's the, um, Wild Meadow and um, Ivory. I like that it kind of has a Liberty vibe. You know? That's what I was about, that's what I was came over here to do, right? Just to iron this. Oh, and to overlock the side seam. That's what it is. I'm like, we didn't come over here to do that. I was just like, and we can do that too. <laughs> Remind me what I'm doing. Here's one of my tips. 
I keep meaning to do a little video about this, but um, when you're overlocking your pieces and you like to press your seams one direction or the other consistently, like, oh, I like to press my seams towards the back, my side seams or whatever. Oh, did I press this the wrong direction? Oh, it looks like I did. Um, I always surge with the fronts facing up and that way I can tell when I go to do the other seams which way to push the seam. I don't have to go, wait, is this the front or the back? I can tell by the seam allowance. It's something I figured out a really long time ago. And then I worked somewhere, which is kind of a crazy story where I worked. Um, it was this mother-daughter dress wear company. I worked there for a while. One of the many reasons I don't work for family-run companies. <laughs> no offense, but <laughs> you're kind of a challenge. But um, so see, this is the front of the garment right here, right? So if I surge with the front up, when I go to put, attach the tear down there, I'll know, oh, this is the front of the garment because I can see my surging edge. And if I make sure that I do it on both sides, it's a nice little reminder. Especially like if you have a set in a sleeve too, when you get to that armhole and you're like, wait, is this the front or the back? Um, you can, it's a nice way to tell. Hey Diane, how's it going? Nice to see you. Welcome back. What have you been up to? I'm not gonna, I, I normally, uh, I think I will offset my, uh, I don't like sewing a sleeve like this. I like to set in raglans as well, but we didn't do it that way. that dart nice and flat and flush. All right. Stop that. This little tray does not stay on the machine very well. Why is this so, um, Tight, you know. All right, and now I'll go up the side because this is the front. So I think, hmm, I gotta put a some uh, buttonholes in. So I think, let's see, what time is it? Oh, okay, it's only noon. All right, so um, I'm gonna get my casing ready. I'm gonna get my tie ready. I might even do the buttonholes. And then um, if there's time, we'll sew the casing on as well. Nice. That's nice you could do that. <laughs> All right. How old are your grandsons? Oh yeah, Heidi, here's the website in here. I'll put the link to the fabric in the chat for you. There you go. All right. So here is my casing and here is my tie. Um, what is this? That is a piece of binding. So let's see how long of a tie I really need. I just like cut a lot of fabric yesterday. Oh. This is almost long enough. That's annoying. 
Five and eight. Ooh, how fun. <laughs> Next Wednesday. That seems so early. I thought school started like the week of August 25th or so. That seems kind of early. Not that I'm saying extend their vacation. <laughs> hmm, I don't really want to seem in the ties that dangle. So I think I'm going to put it at the center. You know, like I'm going to cut apart my tie here and I'm going to add it to the back of it. I'm just going to cut it in half. And then add a little section. So I know by doing this, I'll have two seams, but you know, it's like better than um, a seam on one tie, you know? All right, so let's piece this together with a uh, diagonal seam. That'll offset the thickness. It'll lay a lot fat, flatter when it's folded up. So let me piece this one first. This is really helpful, like doing that, especially with like straps and things. All right, which one was the centerpiece? This one is, all right. So then let's put this one on here. And, oof, that seems kind of not the same size. <laughs> All right, piece this. If you're doing a fabric that is really hard to turn inside out, you can fold it and edge stitch it. This fabric's going to turn inside out really nicely, so we're going to um, sew a loop and turn it right side out. Yeah, right, Diane? Exactly. Based on the agricultural schedule. Oh, wow, Anna. Yeah. I'm just pressing these. Um, and maybe I'll press them a little bit better just to make the... When I turn them with the loop turner, they'll be a little bit flatter. So I'm just pressing this little juncture nice and flat. All right, so yeah, so one way you could do this is you fold it in half the long way like this, iron it, right? So now you have a crease down the long length of the middle, open it up and now fold each edge towards that like this and iron that and then fold it in half along the original line, iron it and then edge stitch it. But um, that'll be too hard on this fabric, so I'm gonna just do the loop turner. It also means that one edge won't be uh, finished, but that's okay, I can edge stitch it shut. In fact, I'll just edge stitch both of them shut. It'll be a little easier to deal with, I hope. <laughs> So we're just gonna sew those right sides together at a pretty narrow seam allowance because I want it to finish about an eighth, a quarter of an inch wide. So I'm just gonna sew along the whole length here. Dang. Hey, uh, hey Missy, how's it going? Hey Amanda, how's it going? You had to take your surgeon for cleaning service. I had no idea the gears had to be greased. Oh. Oh, interesting. Did it tell you that in your manual? This seems kind of important, you know? Yeah, that ant right there, Anna, that, like, not knowing that for, for my kiddo, that was very anxiety-inducing. I really don't understand how that, they just, how they can, it's like you're, you're basically operating a business without knowing who your employees are. <laughs> and 
And I know that I, I like I've ha I've known enough to know that it's just the way it is. It's not like they're trying to be vague. They have to do it that way, but it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I've done that, Barbara. Yeah, and in this case, that would actually be really great because I could uh, edge stitch the opening shut or not, and it's always going to be in the casing. So yeah, you could do it that way. I thought about it, but um, I just feel like the loop turner is going to chew up the end no matter what. So I might as well just like edge stitch it shut or or hem it, you know, instead because it's so lightweight and the it'll. I just don't think the loop turner is going to play nice with this, the ends, you know. So, no, the manual said oil. Yeah, that's, I mean, how are you supposed to know? Um, yeah, do you, did you not buy it locally, Amanda? Because you could take it back there, but if you bought it like online, yeah, you're going to probably have to find someone who services your machine type. Just plan for it because I don't know why, but it takes so, weeks. I don't understand that. If you took your car somewhere and they were like, yeah, it might take a couple weeks, you'd be like, what? It was such a pet peeve. And so what I would always be like, well, can I book a time slot? And then when it's like within two days of the time slot, I'll bring it in. I'll let you have it for a few days. Um, and then, you know, you do it and then you give it back to me rather than it just sitting there not knowing when it's get, getting serviced. Like, come on, I ran a business, <laughs> you know? And they just did not care. They were just like, you aren't very important. Like, it just felt really disrespectful. And I'm like, I've spent thousands of dollars here. I just stopped going. I um, had a mechanic come to see my industrial machines. That was a little different. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this fits. Yeah, yeah, right, Anna? Because you know the kids know the potential of who the teachers can be. And they have a favorite or whatever. And they, you know, they want to worry about it. They want to know. Oh, you did, Amanda? Yeah, hopefully there's a dealer near you. I wonder if there's online dealers, but then you have to ship your machine, you know? Yeah. Okay, let's get this going a little bit here. I can't look at chat. I gotta like get this get this started first. Here we go. The trick with these is to always be pulling on your loop turner so it doesn't come unhooked. Okay, that's one, one trick. The other trick is to not get greedy. Just do the end, a few inches at the end. And then when you can get the, the end to pull out this side, then you can unhook it and you don't have to worry so much, you know? That's awesome, Melina. That that's so rare. I know Barbara, but you know. Okay, so right now I'm gonna slide this off my loop turner very gently because it's so long, right? So I'm gonna do this. I actually made my tie longer than I needed to. Eh, eh, I'm running out of room. Okay. So now I have the end and I can take it off the loop turner. All right. So now it'll be a little easier. You also don't want to pull so hard that it pops your stitches because repairing this is a little bit tricky, you know? There's a lot of ways to do something like this. So you can't even see. Yeah, right, Anna? It's 
a baby lock. Hmm. This isn't very exciting, is it? It's so much. Oh, see, if we get too greedy, this happens. It just won't slide after a while. You gotta back it off a little bit. But that's why getting it off the loop turner, when that happens, that's not such a big deal. If it happens and it's still in the loop turner and you have to back it off a little, then you have run the risk of it popping off of the loop turner. I really made this way too long. <laughs> Wow. I I um I only have Jukies right now except for my Bernina home machine. And I wanted to buy my serger and cover stitch from my local place because I knew they sold Jukies and they didn't sell these models. Um, they didn't really sell um, serger and cover stitch to speak of. It They were catering to <clears throat> anything that was geared more towards quilting. I think servicing costs in general between like 75 and 150. Depends on where you are. That's what I would guess. And I would find out what's included, you know. Am I holding it? Okay, almost there. We're almost there. It's gonna unravel before I get it done. Hmm. Are you sure you, it needs servicing? Is it just dusty, Amanda? Okay. Let's give this a press. And then let's... So one easy way to do a casing would be to also sew a tube and then just top stitch the tube. Rather than sewing, um, turning under to sm small edges, you know. All right, so let's try and keep the seam on the edge training it, just like So Fun said. We're like, this is what you're gonna do now, forever and ever. And it really wants to twist and stuff. And I think that it comes from how well you cut it on the grain line. He's just happy to go back. <laughs> I, I remember the first year after my daughter graduated high school um, and she spent one year at home because it was the, the great panini um, and then she moved away. And so I think she did move away like within the first year moving out, like the following summer. And um, <clears throat> I remember making sure that I appreciated that during that whole back to school season, the year she didn't go back, and I still appreciate it, just appreciating that we weren't involved in that because it really was some of the most stressful things we went through. Um, and, you know, she ended up going to an independent school where um, she still had to go to school a few days a week, but um, it'd be like, English was twice a week for two hours, and then in between she would do the rest at home. So it was technically independent study, but with uh, on campus, it was like a hybrid. But, you know, for some classes she would just go once a week. So it was almost like college. It was almost, it was almost identical to college, like her schedule. Um, 
and she did so great with that. Like that was her wheelhouse, you know? And, um, but it took, you know, first like year and a half or year and then starting the second year of high school. And she was like, I'm not, I'm not going back. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. And I just, man, when she graduated and um, the following year came around, I just was like, this is awesome not to worry about this. And I wanted, I appreciated it every day. I just sat there and thought about it, you know? This is where my little seam is, so it's a little funky. All right. It's good to, woo, it's good to appreciate things like that, you know, when big things change and you don't have to deal with them again. Remind yourself. All right. So we need, we need buttonholes in this baby. Now would be a good time to start out. Oh, it's not. That's funny, Anna. That happens to me too sometimes, especially if I scroll up and then it's like, there are more messages below. I'm like, yeah, can you please show them to me? <laughs> All right, let's see how big my casing needs to be because I cut a piece that was generally what I needed. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, what, Terry? Close this. It's really dusty and kind of greasy. I've never had it serviced. My back's just are a bit loose. Would that need looked at? Uh, no, that could just be your tension. Um, <clears throat> back stitches, you know, like when you go backwards, it's like reversing your car to like higher gear feels like, you know? So sometimes I feel like the tension isn't that great. If the back stitches are looser that's kind of interesting I, that could just be like maybe it just needs to be run if like you know get back in the groove of sewing and stuff and get um greased and oiled everywhere yeah clean out the bobbin case yeah and that's just air i can show you how to do it right now like i literally just push air and not just the bobbin case but the um housing that holds it as well. I don't know if yours is removable or not, but blow that out too. And if you don't have a re, um, removable bobbin case, or even if you do, in a lot of home machines, you can actually take apart that whole housing. It's like these little arms, you open them, like on my Bernina, they open and you can pull it out and clean it. You won't hurt anything. That's very, very, you know, something you should be doing anyway. And then, um, yeah, the, the, those little brushes, yeah. Um, I was really surprised, like the mechanic I use, and he's been a mechanic for a very, very long time. He uses compressed air. I, as long as you're not really blowing the dust into the machine deeper, you're trying to get it out of there, it's really useful to um, get, the, get it cleaned out, get all the fuzzies off. And like when I changed my bobbin, when I was sewing full time, you know, with our factory, I blew out my bobbin and bobbin case every single time I changed the bobbin. And he told me to do that. Oh, you know, uh, Amanda, that could be the way your machine likes to sew. You know, like basically like it doesn't like you. <laughs> so, um, one thing you can do is when you go to sew a seam, so let's say this is, this is, you're gonna sew this together, right? And you put it in your machine and you go to sew and when you go backwards and then it gets that big ball of thread vomit on it. One thing you can try is put another piece of fabric behind it like this, like this, just butt it up against it and then sew. It could be that your presser foot and your feed dogs are really, your feed dogs especially are very sensitive. Um, it could be also what presser foot you're using. It, um, it can be a lot of different things and the fabric could be getting sucked down into the feed dog. So if your presser foot, um, like the machine works best when everything is level 
And that's why sometimes, you know, when you're on the edge of something, um, or like on the, like if you're sewing on the edge of a thick hem, you know, and you're up here, um, that your machine will sometimes just not sew, you know, you're just like, what the heck? Or it gets caught. And that's just because of those uneven thickness, especially if you're approaching a juncture of a seam. So when your presser foot goes up onto the seam like this and it loses its traction with the feed dogs, because the feed dogs and the presser foot need to always be not touching each other, but the stuff in between needs to be keeping contact between the two. That way you um, don't lose traction. It's like you're going, if you were driving and you went over a, a speed bump and your wheels didn't touch the ground for a long time and you tried to accelerate, your wheels have nothing to grab, right? So that's really what you're trying to maintain on all sewing. So don't use a pipe cleaner. Oh, use a pipe cleaner, fold them in half. Oh. He kept seeing machines that had a lost spring and he finally realized mask makers were pushing the pipe cleaners too hard and breaking springs and brushes, but... Well, they could have also been a little new to sewing, you know? And not unfamiliar with the parts. I'm just kind of looking. I'm getting my casing the right um, width. See, I'm lining it up, the fold to the seam right here. Boop, like that. And um, then I'm gonna figure out where the um, buttonholes need to be. That's what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna center this like this. And now we're gonna go put some um, interfacing there. Did they say not to use air? I mean, Amanda, if you're not able to sew at all, you, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna find the center of that right there. And now we're gonna put some interfacing. Where's my little scissors? Where's my little scissors? Mm. The heck? Yeah, I, I agree with Anna. <laughs> Use what you have and approach it gently. <laughs> You're, you can't do a whole lot. And if your machine's kind of newer, you're not gonna be able to get in there too much. Why does that look, look at this angle. What the heck, is that the interfacing doing that? Huh, why is that? Look at that curve. Did I not cut this in a straight line? No, to prune a messy star, I usually hold the threads at the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah, I do that too, I th hold the threads. All right, so I'm just getting get my um, home machine here for buttonholes. And I need to get some thread. These are all the things I have for my home machine. Look <laughs> how few things I have. <laughs> Okay, I found a white bobbin. Okay. Are you asking me, Diane?
Yeah, Terry might. Exactly, I've heard that too. Oh, I need to, I need to actually add the plug. If you're asking me, Diane, I have um, an 8700-7. The dash seven just means it has the electronics. You can get it without and it costs a lot less. But if you can spring for the electronics, do it. <laughs> I have a whole video about it too. If you want to, if you're like, if you're really kind of thinking about it and you're just like, I'm just not sure. I don't know if, if this is gonna be what I want it for. How do I do this? You know, yada, yada, yada. Um, oh yeah, is the 9,000 a, like a, oh, those are the Q versions that, that are tabletop. I haven't met anyone who hasn't liked an industrial machine. Is this the buttonhole, buttonhole foot? All right, here, here's my Bernina buttonhole um, oy, tip. Is when you put your bobbin in the case, and you put the thread there, through there, then go through that little arm if you have a Bernina. It makes a huge difference in the buttonhole. Huge. <laughs> no. Get through there. It doesn't help that my fingernail on my pointer is so messed up right now that um, I can't grab it <laughs> when it goes through. Mm. Don't I have just like a white spool of thread? That's cream. Hmm. Okay, fine. That's cream too. Don't I have white? Maybe I don't. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> oh, here's a white spool. Nice. Heart sends me spools of thread <laughs> with the project usually. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you don't need to send the thread, you know? But um, it has saved me so many times. <laughs> when it had to feed and fabric at a hang on. All right. You're supposed to hold this, but you just really don't like that one. That one is just doesn't, this just doesn't like it. Oh, look, the mods have something to do. Um, I'm upstairs. I'll be really honest with you, Randa. It's a pain. Um, if you, if you don't have electronics, it's easier because you can disconnect the head from the, the table so easily. Like it's literally only connected by a belt and the belt just loops over the, the free, the, um, the free wheel, the wheel, the hand wheel. And, um, with the electronics, you can remove the head of the, the machine head from the table. Uh, but it feels a little bit scarier because you have to disconnect a bunch of cords, right? Um, the other thing about an industrial is it sits in a pan of oil, always. It never leaks, like that's not something you have to worry about. So, um, <laughs> it is your fault, Aisha. So, if you are worried about the oil or it leaking or something like that, that's not happening. The, the only time that happened for me, so I'll be honest, it did happen to me once. My machine was 45 years old, I think. And it was just a, we just needed to slip out the gasket because there's a plug at the bottom of the oil pan so you can drain it when you move your machine. And it is a good idea to drain your oil pan when you move your machine. You don't want it really sloshing around in there. 
Um, not because of spillage, but it also just gets all over the inside of your machine that doesn't really need it, right? And um, they re refresh and they disappear. I'm gonna refresh, thank you. Um, so, um, it, I once your machine is set up, it's set up. Like, you're not really moving your machine a lot, you know? Um, if you move a lot, then yeah, it's a little bit of a pain. It's heavy, it's very heavy. So the, the thing about moving it that makes it so heavy is that when you're, you, there's one person at one end of the table and the other person's at the other end of the table and you're walking, it's unfortunate that the end that has no room for your knees to move and walk, you know, like, like this, um, is the heavier end. So the person that has more leg room to actually walk holding the machine, it has the lighter end. It's just this, it's just like, that's just how it is. So anyway, all right, so where is my, here's my interfacing. And our tie is pretty darn little. So let's just put another little, I'm just winging this as usual, right? <laughs> um, we just need a tiny little buttonhole basically. Oh, I have Libby, I have, I have, I have. I have totally moved my, I moved it here. So, um, yeah, I have because I'm lazy. It's like everybody else. I even did when, oh, I actually, I'm not sure if I did. I don't think I did. When we brought them to a trade show and we sewed on the trade show floor, like we did custom bags on the floor. I think I took it out there. It's so easy to drain. I What I have is usually like a spare, like a, I get a bathroom trash can, like a tiny trash can, just to put under the hole when I do it, just in case. And I have a mason jar. And so I, yeah, and I do hire a mover and every time I'm like, okay, I have these machines, they're really heavy, blah, blah, blah. Every time they show up, they're like, okay, we'll bring two extra people. They get there and they're like, this is no big deal. <laughs> So it really is no big deal to them. Um, I'm really doing a bad job of this right now, so I want to focus on this just for a second. Um, and I know you can't really see. Where did my little ruler go? I was showing you something over here. Oh, there's my scissors too. Okay. Here, I'm gonna do this. Wait. So you can see what I'm doing. All right, so there's my center line. I'm just gonna use chalk, I think, because um, it's they're so small, you know? All right, so here's my center line. And I'm just gonna put them um, like a half inch on either side of the center line, like that. And then um, the center going horizontal is right here and we want this to be, we'll just do this. So I have a, a video about, it's like how to use and maintain an industrial sewing machine. It's a very long video, but it gives you a really good idea of all those things and how to do, how to wind a bobbin, what to worry about, what not to worry about, what does this dial do, what does that dial do? And um, and I'm not an expert in knowing all the things on it. You lost sound. How'd you lose sound? You lost sound? No, it's not you stuff. Oh, okay, you're there, okay. Um, so you could check that out if you're kind of on the fence, Randa. But yeah, the, like Terry got one and uh, a few other people, so. Okay, I'm just gonna do this little buttonhole thing. I'm actually gonna sew a tiny bit on a piece of scrap first since I changed my thread and all that. Oh wait, I need a presser or a foot pedal. Okay. All right, here we go. I've learned that that line gets lined up with this little hump of my presser foot. <laughs> oh, 
I learned that when I made my buttonhole skill building session. Like, I really can't see. Where's my chalk? Oh, there it is. Do you see it pleating the fabric? Where's the chalk? I know I went past it. Is that it up there? Well, heck. I could not see that. I'll just take those out. The gray chalk is probably a really bad idea with this white thread, you know. Yeah, right? I'm gonna clip my threads now. Okay, usually I, I leave them all connected, but they're not usually this close to one another. It's a little bit puckery. All right, so. Um, let's see if I can get these a little bit more symmetrical than my husband's pants. Yeah, there you go. Terry's got some good tips there. Where is it? Where's the line? Why can't I, this is why I never use chalk, because I can't ever see, there it is, the line. The window of your presser foot is just too small. Jeez Louise. All right, this is why you do contrast buttonholes too. Where is it? Is that it? <laughs> oh my God. I hope that's it. Yeah, I think that was it. Phew, I mean, they look they look pretty good. So this one, see that one's longer? We're just gonna pop up those stitches. All right, just trimming all that up. And then um, I could just technically leave it. Like no one's really ever gonna notice that this buttonhole, see right there, it goes like a qu quarter of an inch past. I really could probably just leave it. This is gonna be cinched with a tie right over it, right? But you know, if you have this happen, I like to just remove the stitches. Maybe I would do this with my glasses on too. I, I really can't see very well. And I like to use my seam ripper and I just poke it out the other end, you know, where I want it to stop. I really can't see very well. Eek. Okay. And then now let's cut our hole. I never use glue. It's fine if you do, I don't. I do this. I get rid of all the threads that you create when you cut it. They're loose now, right? Don't glue those, get rid of them. They don't need to be there. And once you've trimmed all the excess threads, that's all you're gonna get. You're not gonna get any more. They're cut because, you know, they're loose because we cut it. So I always rough them up, get rid of all the ones I can, trim them. They won't go any further. I've never glued a buttonhole in my life, but it's fine if you like to do it, so. 
All right. So we can get rid of this now. Um, I mean, I don't know if you want me to enable you, Diane, but uh, I've had two that were mail ordered. <laughs> they came, um, they arrived on a pallet, totally assembled and everything. And then um, they just needed the oil, I think, and something else. It was really easy. Uh, I got it from a place in Texas. I'm in California. I think it was like $450 for each machine. They were uh, Juki 5500s. So identical machine, just newer. Um, no, <laughs> identical machine, but older. <laughs> That's why they were 450 each, um, or something like that. Maybe they were 900 each, including shipping or something like that, which is still a very good deal. I've I've only ever paid like between 600 and 900 for a used machine. Um, this one was brand new. It's my very first brand new industrial machine I've ever had. It's the only brand new industrial I've ever had. <laughs> Random. Very exciting. Um, all right. So I think that one of the easy ways to do this casing would be to sew this like right sides together like this and then fold it up and then turn it under. You know what I mean? So let's see if this was folded under here. Let's sew it in a circle too. Right. I put the seam at the, the side. I'm, I'm leaving stuff for to do on Saturday, right? <laughs> That's how your first one came to Terry. Yeah, your first one. How many do you have now? <laughs> do you have two, right? One with electronics and one without? Wait, no. You have one with electronics and then you have uh, a different machine, right? A different type of industrial. Terry's pretty fancy. She's got like all the cool stuff. Yeah, I do not blame you on that one, Diane. I think um, <clears throat> this is going to sound a little bit mean, but I think um, this t at this time, if I were to buy a machine, it'd be new because there's been a huge influx of new sewists. And unless, and a lot of them I think are getting rid of their, going to get rid of their machines. And unless you're going through a dealer who has checked out their machine and like basically they sold it to the dealer and you're buying it from them again, I wouldn't buy it just off of like Craigslist unless you can go there and tr and check it out. So. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a good tip of Libby's. It's not a bad, a bad thing. It's not a bad motor, but it's quieter. My brother, when he saw my machine, like he helped me move my machines once and he was like, this has a clutch motor. And I said, yeah, ooh, bod, something to do. Um, oh, a tech so was like, that's what it was, a tech so with electronics, exactly. So um, uh, he was pretty like, I could work on your machine. Like I know all about clutch motors. So um, that is kind of cool. All right, so let's see here. If this was turned a quarter of an inch and this was turned a quarter of an inch, right? <clears throat> that, and I straddled it, I centered it over this. So what I could do is, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna turn this inside out and I'm gonna sew this right sides Wait, I'm gonna sew it right sides together, not wrong sides together. <laughs> I'm gonna sew those right sides together. Where's the front and where's the back? This is the front and this is the back. So we're gonna start at the back. I gotta make sure I do this right. So I have 
this goes across the back and that goes on the front. All right, so we're gonna start at the side seam. We want the sides to go towards the back. And I'm gonna line this up with the raw edge, just a little, like, like three eighths of an inch away from that fold line there. Just gonna try and center it over it. And then we're just gonna sew it on right sides together. Yeah, the clutch motor noise does get a little bit old, but they, they are, it, you don't leave them on though by accident. But yeah, Randa, they, they may be more affordable to get one, and if you're getting your very first one, you might just go, okay, I'll get to used to what I get, you know, get used to having one and get an idea of like what you want. Cause they're not bad motors. But you, it sounds industrial. It's like, <laughs> all right, so I kind of want to, make sure that I get my buttonhole centered on my bodice. So I'm gonna um, mark that too. I'm gonna crease it there. Just, you know, give myself every chance of success here. Just folding it in half right here. Crease, crease, crease. Crease, crease, crease. And I'm also going to Put a pin here. That way, when I get closer to that, I can make sure my buttonholes are centered over that, you know, kind of like push pull, a little bit here and there. When I sold my machines, it was kind of fun because I was like, I could actually say, here is a ton of videos using these machines. <laughs> Here's a how-to video. <laughs> when I went to sell my um, old serger, I got like one hit. And it, I think it's because of where I live, there's like no population. So it's like trying to recommend it to people in this area. And I'm like, oh, I gotta like go to town and list it. All right, so there's my pin. Here's my buttonholes. It's lining up, so not worried. It's centered. Get rid of this pin here. There we go. I'm just, like I said, just keeping a parallel line. All right, this is the front, right? This is the back, okay, yeah. All right, let's go to the, the iron. The can of air fell and I'm um, almost just stepped right on it. All right, and so now I'm just gonna iron this down. Let's hope my chalk goes away. Do 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 I was just saying in a workshop last night, because I learned recently that you can now put on um, restrictions when someone joins your, not restriction, uh, guidelines. <clears throat> so when you join my chat, it'll say, hey, you know, welcome to my chat. These are the rules here. Do you agree to this before you start chatting, you know? And I thought that this was a way, uh, something you could put on your 
comments for your videos, right? And I was kind of surprised that it, it was for um, that. I, and, but then when I looked into it, I was like, oh, this is like live stream stuff. I was like, well, that, that's perfect. I mean, like, I am a live streamer, but um, I don't have a problem. Like, I don't have a problem with anyone in my chat, so I don't, I don't enable it. But that was the, and I'm really sorry if I'm going to, well, I'm not really sorry at all. But um, I was saying that the one thing I, the only annoying thing I really get on my channel is, and this is kind of crazy to say this out loud, but I get mansplainers on that video. And I don't know why that is, because I, I don't technically, I don't get it very often. I get it sometimes on the placket and the, the, the tower placket video, and I get them on the, um, <sighs> one other, but that's the only place. But that video in particular, I will get guys, it looks like they're guys by their username and, and picture telling me, <laughs> you know, stuff. <laughs> and I, like, I love having a conversation with anybody about everything sewing related, but I always think like, if you were looking for a video on how to do this, that's the only reason you would have found my video is because you were looking for a video on how to do this. And now you're going to come here and tell me how to do it. Like, I can see right through you. <laughs> so if you ever look at that video, that's the comment section of that video. So just so you know. The um, how to use an industrial machine, how to use and maintain an industrial machine, like the best I, the, the way I know how. And I'm very clear, like, look, I am not a mechanic. I've been using these for a very long time. I do use a mechanic, so I've gotten a lot from him. Um, I don't ask him to teach me things when he's here, though. I The only things I get from him are the things he tells me to do, you know? So, because um, I don't want to waste his time tr training me. That's not what I... You know, he's not there for that. So, um, and I'm very clear about that. But, um, uh, yeah. The, uh, trolling is when people are kind of, you know, mean and just write negative comments to write negative comments. They're not writing negative comments. They're writing four paragraph long explanations of how I'm doing something wrong on my machine. <laughs> something I've been doing for 20 years and my my um, mechanic, ha I've been using my mechan my current mechanic for 10 years um, and he ha does the exact same things. Like the way I thread my machine, one guy was very adamant that I thread it wrong and I'm like, that's fine. You know, you can thread it any way you like, but this is the way I thread my machine, you know, whatever. Or um, that's not what that dial's for. It's for this. Okay, cool. Use it for that. You know, like... Actually, if you actually look in the manual, <laughs> anyway, exactly, Randa. Yeah, and it's it's funny because it's like, wait, you're here because you needed help, and why don't you just say thanks for the help or just don't say anything? Like, I don't know. It's odd. I couldn't possibly know what I'm doing. I mean, you know. Who am I? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good way to put it too. I guess yeah, you guys are probably right. And it's always on a Sunday. <laughs> I always wake up to those and I'm like, oh boy. One guy was very, very certain. And I kept saying, yeah, you're right, but that's not the machine I'm using. I'm using the Dash 7, which is the one with electronics, you know, and I can't do that because it has electronics. And it's just like, I guess that is wasting my time. But the thing is like, they think they're trying to be helpful and um and, and in that 
I know this goes against what, what, what people would want me to do probably, but in that spirit, I appreciate that, right? I, if we're trying to be helpful, then that's great. Um, I just am always surprised that people don't think, like I may come off as maybe a little bit aloof, but I'm smarter than I probably, you probably think I am. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm on to you. Yeah, that's kind of how I think. I just think, okay, buddy. You actually don't have to follow my video at all. If you know better, I don't know why you're here. <laughs> so, all right. So that went really well. I just turned under that edge and um, stitched it down. Now I'm just The worst part about this is I'm gonna have to use a safety pin to thread the bra string. If Shim were here, he's gonna he would say, you're not gonna leave anything to sew for Saturday. <laughs> I like to get it like at like a point where it almost feels like, okay, this chunk is done, you know, like, so we're gonna have almost the bodice completely done. The sleeve hems are the only thing left on the bodice now. I could even try, oh, should we put it on the dress form? Wait, let's put the draw cord in there and we'll try it on the dress form. Ooh, this is fun. And then I'm gonna get going. Have to use a safety pin. Oh, here's one right here, actually. <clears throat> Is the sound and video out of sync? Oh, oh, wait, this one or my other one? Oh, I hope it's not. I hope you guys would have told me that a long time ago. Did it just happen? Yeah, refresh. See if that's it. Tell me. Oh, the video stopped. There we go. Yeah. That happened the uh, other day, didn't it? Here we go. Is that better? Let me make it zoom in a little better. Oh, it's a little too bright. Fix, yeah. I don't know why I did that. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> I've always said, if I ever have a blog, that's what it's gonna be called. I'm very confrontational, you guys. <laughs> I'm very nice, very helpful, but I'm also like confrontational in a positive way. I promise, I promise, always positive, but yeah. <laughs> I like to sort stuff out. Like I'm like, okay, wait, what do you mean? I have to know. I was at my parents' house the other day and they just recently got solar and they also got a, a generator, which is, if you can afford it here, it's kind of essential. And um, their power went out three times while I was there in the hour and a half I was there. Refresh is not, no, I think you have to like close it down, Barbara, and like open it again, I agree. All right, we're just making our way around here to the beginning, which is right there. Oh, it's so nice when these kinds of casings are really uh, like smooth and easy to do, right? Okay, so let's, I could knot the end too, you know, I don't have to hem it, there we go. All right, let's get Trixie out. Ooh, where's my full screen thing? 
It's this one here. <laughs> Rixie, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a bit. Gosh, thank goodness someone invented labels. I'd wear my clothes backwards all the time. You know how often I put my underwear on inside out and I don't know, like all day long. And it'll be my husband telling me at the end of the day when I'm putting my pajamas on. And I'm like, are you serious? That's not even like a backwards forwards thing. That's just a very unobservant thing. You know? Okay, I'm not a fan of how much this the sleeves are like like gathered up like that. They're kind of weird, you know. Okay. This little draw cord is going to be my savior for my, my hip tilt. <laughs> this does come in a top length, the tunic length version. Yeah, that'll work. Look at how cute it looks in the back. <laughs> Yeah, this is, gonna, this is gonna work. Yeah, the sleeves are just, it's just too much fabric for that elastic. What do you guys think? Let's put it centered. There we go. I love the way this looks in the back. Very cute. Oh, is there sound? Oh yeah, there's sound. Okay, I think I did check this microphone. Oh no, I didn't check this microphone. All right. Oh, and we have, um, is it, wait, how do the sleeves, wait a minute, don't, aren't the sleeves elastic too? So I still need to do that too, so we'll do that on Saturday. So see there, that's technically the first tier the sketch isn't very good. I'm sorry, five out of four, but the sketch is not very accurate. Because look, I made a straight line here, and maybe I shouldn't have, but see, look, now the tier, this bottom tier is, this is deeper the here than here. It's straight here. And I, you know what? I, that's probably my bad. Maybe I was supposed to follow a line parallel to the hem. So that's my bad. So um, I'll look on the directions. I read the directions and I read them through, but I probably missed that part that you're supposed to do it parallel to this here. Because the length was based on cup size. So. Oh, oh really? So. You did the short sleeve, which goes to the, like, just above the elbow, Randa. Yeah, I think the sleeve hem elastic will be really cute. Cool. This is cute. I wish you could see the fabric, like, in person, too. It's so pretty. Um, I'm really hoping that it looks good on me, too, because I am a white girl, you know? <laughs> and, um, oh, that didn't really help. A little sharper. Like I'm hoping for more contrast, you know? It does, I'm not really doing it favors, am I? Yeah, when I when I was like looking through my my patterns, I was like, oh, this could actually work really good. It's got like purple, pink, like a reddish coral, turquoise, teal, little bits of yellow. Yeah, I think it's cute. Yeah, so 
that you made a maxi so it really drowns, uh, drowns you. Oh, well, I guess you could shorten it. How many tiers did you do? Did you do a lot of tiers? Ooh, hi, Mafio. Nice to see you. Um, I made the saturation. I really am that pink in person, though. <laughs> um, so I recently got a package from Minerva and I feel like very consistently Mafio, it's like either a week or five weeks. You know what I mean? Like I really, I haven't really um, gotten anything very consistent. So from Minerva, it takes very long time. From everybody else, it's like a week. And I think that's probably like where they're at um, this one, this one, I can't remember. I feel like this took like two weeks, but my latest package from Minerva took less than two weeks. So yeah, you definitely want to like plan. So yeah. Yeah. And I like her fabric selection. She's got a really, very nice one. So, all right, well then I'll see you Saturday and we'll put on the tears and the sleeve elastic. Um, and I think that's it. And the pockets. So, oh, um, you just did two. Wow. Okay. So I wanted to show you what I did with the pockets, just in case you want to join me on this. I don't know if anyone is, but I'm going to show you what I did so you can be ready. So originally I cut out my pockets. I just did little straight up hand pockets like this, right? You can probably find one in any of like a pattern you have. And when I decided to make the whole bodice and then put the pockets on the skirt and attach the skirt to the dress, um, I know that this pocket's going to sit a little lower than usual. And so I'm going to connect it to the waist. So what I did was I raised up this point right here that goes to the side seam one inch. And then I just blended this up to the waist, right? So now, when the pocket is caught in the waist seam, it will make the pocket always stay forward, which is such a quality of life issue when you're, when you have pockets. Cause you know how sometimes your keys are so heavy in a, in a dress like this, the, the rayon's so lightweight and you go get in the car and then you end up sitting on your keys. They're behind you. Your pocket flips to the back. So that's what I'm doing. You don't have to do that, but, um, if you want to, it's an idea. I had just enough fabric to do that. So yes. And Saturday, 2 PM Pacific. Thank you for the reminder, Libby, 2 PM Pacific, different day and time. Sorry, Euros. I won't see you probably unless you're night owls, but, um, yeah. So 2 PM Pacific and, um, and yeah. And then, uh, next time after Saturday is two weeks from yesterday or no, I think it's Tuesday. Let's look at ye old schedule. Let me get this right. And I will be making the Magnolia dress by Deer and Doe Patterns. Um, is this it? Yes. Let me show you. I, I think my computer, I mean, my audio may be messed up, but I'm just going to show you my ca calendar. Really. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'll just do it this way. So you see right here, 23rd, I'm cutting the Magnolia dress by Deer and Doe, sewing and uh, Wednesday and Thursday. All right. So sewing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 23rd to the 25th. And that's my four year anniversary week. I'm also 40 subscribers away from hitting 15,000 subscribers. And uh, I just passed my 500th video. <laughs> which is crazy. So anyway, big milestones. Anyway. All right. See you guys Saturday. Thanks for coming. You guys appreciate it. Nice seeing y'all.